Thank you, Michael. It's always a pleasure to be here. I've been coming to Australia since uh, 1986. And I also worked with your Australian Olympic Committee back then to help in the development of your initial Olympic laboratory, which became the Olympic lab for the uh, Sydney Games. And uh, I just got back from the China Olympics, which were unbelievable. Prior to that Games, the Australian Olympics actually was my favorite in 2000 here. I thought you guys did an amazing job uh, at the Games. It was one of the greatest Games done. Uh, my, my favorites have been L.A., Australia, and now China. And uh, we're si and you guys did very good at the Olympic Games, too. In fact, uh, ratio-wise, I've been told better than any country in the world per capita. So uh, uh, what I'm going to do this morning is give you a, a little overview on the field of anti-aging medicine because it's a very sophisticated, interesting field. We started, as Michael said, we started with just 12 doctors and two booths in, uh, in 1992. And this year in Las Vegas, we'll have over 7,000 doctors and over 700 booths. That's like, I don't know if you had 700 booths, but that's like a city. And so uh, we've grown dramatically. And the reason we've grown is because of the great interest. And most of the physicians who would come to the conferences, our initial attendees, were coming for their own health because they were 40 or 50 years old, they just didn't feel right. And they say, you know, something's wrong, and they would start to learn about this new field, and we'd get quite excited and go, gee, you know, there really is something I can do. And it turned out so well. This is a shot of Banana Joe, by the way. He's 85 years old in this photograph, uh, barefoot water skiing. So we have a different view of where we can go and what we can be. And it looks like they put the, uh, I have a wrong lecture in here, but I'll still work through it. Uh, 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 there's always, you know, after a long flight, there's always a few surprises. But then again, I got blamed. I hooked through Thailand and, and the riots, you know, they had a government martial law. Every time I go into a country, there's martial law. Hopefully you guys will be okay. I'm only going to be here for a day, so you should be all right. Uh, um, yeah, I think we have the wrong... Uh, did you guys put the memory stick in? I just want my basic overview of anti-aging. Let me just go scale down it quickly just to see. Uh, can you just make So, you know, we ask a question, who wants to live to be 100? You know, we used to ask this question, saying you wanted to be live, live 100 years of age was a big deal in the old days. Now 100 is nothing. Who here wants to live to be 90 years old? Keep your hand up, otherwise I have to kill you. Yeah. 90, 100, 105, uh, it's starting to drop, 110. Got a few hardcores here, 115. Okay, 115, you could have sex 10 times a day and 500 million cash in the bank, nobody knows where it is. Who wants to be alive? <laughs> okay, now I just changed your perception of what it means to be old. You gotta start thinking with a year 2020 brain, not at the year 2008 brain. You know, I was at the airport in Sydney when I came in, I got this watch, it was six, six bucks, six US. It's a fax machine, emails, telephone. You go, where can I get one? Because today's technology is so great. You go, wow. You know, if I told you 20 years ago that you can go to this thing called a little desktop computer and you could press the button and send the message to 10 million people in the next two minutes, you'd think I was certifiably nuts. And now you go, sure, I'll send it to double amount, no problem, with files, everything. Because Technology has grown to that point. So you need to start really thinking out of the box, and that's what anti-aging medicine all is about. It's about peak performance, maximum performance, and thinking of things a bit differently, thinking out of the box and saying, what can we really do for our patients? How can we become superstar docs? To real this is an Australian shot I like to show. Actually, that's a shark coming after one of our politicians. Uh, the next slide, he's gone. It's very, we're very, very happy. Um, but you need to start thinking a little differently about medicine and what can we do for the patients that's a little more innovative, a little more different, because this is the reason people did not want to live to be 80, 90, or 100 years old, because this is how they viewed aging. They viewed aging as Alzheimer's and loss of muscle mass and loss of bone mass and really being incapacitated, and that's not really the case, because today we have a really very different view of aging. You have people now that are 40, 50, 60, just like the exceptional speech right before, uh, very dynamic. I mean, you probably have more energy now than you did 
10 years ago. I mean, you probably feel better because you're weight training and you feel stronger. Um, I'm 53 now, and I'm the same size physiologically. I have more energy. I can do more and handle more capacity now than I could 30 years ago. And so just the chronological number really doesn't count anymore. Sophia Loren, for her 71st birthday, what she decided she wanted to do was to pose for a calendar wearing nothing but a pair of earrings at a woman in her past 70 years of age. Now, we didn't used to think of a woman of 70 plus as a female sex symbol. So the world is dramatically different than what it was before. And so we need to start thinking of things differently. Now, in the animal kingdom, there are no old animals. Either you eat someone or they eat you. There aren't retirement homes for monkeys and bears and senior citizen homes for gorillas, although we do have one for kangaroos in uh, Brisbane, uh, which we're developing. But there is no old age. But in the human kingdom, there is old age. And so we're seeing this dramatic increase in the aging population, a healthier aging population, and we really can't afford to have a nation of old, sick people. You can't. Even that's why when I was up, when I met with people in China over the years, I said, look, you guys cannot afford to have a nation of sick people. You need to embrace anti-aging medicine because otherwise, as wealthy as a country is today, it will bankrupt itself trying to fulfill the health traumas of people being chronically ill over a period of time. Now, if we look at these, uh, this little example, it's quite interesting, actually. This is a, uh, this is a monk, low-stress lifestyle, vegetarian diet, stays out of the sun in the mid-'70s, looks great. Here's a Peruvian Indian, high-stress lifestyle, too much sun exposure, drug use, 46 years of age. Dramatic increase in the aging process simply because of the mechanisms of how they conduct their lives. Now, the basic principles of anti-aging medicine are really quite simple. It's scientific. We use evidence-based medicine. We take data from peer-reviewed journals, except we don't wait 50 years. I mean, they're still arguing about estrogen after a half a century. We don't wait forever before we employ things, and we try and be a bit more innovative. We're sort of like emergency medicine docs and sports medicine docs. When, a doc, when an athlete goes down on the field, you've got to think quick, you've got to move, and you've got to use innovative technology to get them back on the field, get them back to their sport. Same thing in anti-aging medicine. We try and be more innovative in our approach. The strict definition of anti-aging medicine, I say this because some of you, how many of you, this is your first anti-aging conference? You've never been to one before. All right, well, this is your first exposure. Congratulations, you finally made a move to learn and be the new leaders of tomorrow because anti-aging physicians are generally the most successful docs out there. They're the ones who are single, double, or triple board certified. They're docs that go, you know what, I want to be excited about medicine. And one of the most common comments we get from anti-aging, rather from physicians that attend our conferences, and these are people who are like, you know, in their 60s or so and very, very prominent docs, they wouldn't say anything nice about their mother, let alone about a conference. And they will come up to us and say, you know, this is the finest medical conference I've ever been to in my life. And another common comment we get is that I have not been this excited about medicine since I graduated from medical school. So hopefully you'll feel the same because I think Bill Anton and Mike Zachary and their board have done an excellent job of really trying to put together a wide diversity of topics and in concept and new theories and things that you can employ in your practice beginning next week. They have Mark Gordon who came all the way out from America as well. Well, what is anti-aging medicine? You need to know what it is we're even talking about. Anti-aging medicine is a medical specialty. 